Hello, today I'm going to show you how to install the latest automatic 111 Stable Diffusion web UI for PC. This guide is meant to be really easy for artists to follow, but it does have a few technical steps in order to get Stable Diffusion working. This guide will also include how to install the History Browser as an extension, as it is no longer included in the base package of this Stable Diffusion. So let's go ahead and get started. In order to use this tool, you're going to need a few prerequisites. That includes having Python 3 and Git installed. You will also need to have to download the latest checkpoint file. In this case, we're still looking at version 1.4 by Stability AI. We will also be downloading GFPGAN, which is an extension to Stable Diffusion that will allow us to do a lot of things like upresing and fixing faces. Additionally, we will have to install the latest Stable Diffusion web UI. So feel free to look at this documentation, which is linked in the description down below, and follow along. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to install Python. Just scroll down here, select the header, click the link, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and select Windows Installer 64-bit. Once you have that, go ahead, show this in folder, right click on Python and click run as administrator. Before you click install now, make sure you check on add Python exe to path. Then click install now. Python is successfully installed. So now you can close this, click on installing stable diffusion guide, and move to the next step, which is downloading and installing Git. Go ahead and click this header to go to the Git download page and select click here to download, which will give you the latest version of Git. Once you have that, go ahead, click on the arrow, show in folder, right click on Git and run as administrator. For us, we don't need anything special or fancy with Git. We just want to install it, so we don't really have to change any of the options here. Go ahead, and if this is there, click Yes. Click Next. One area where you might want to change something is if you do code, you can go ahead and select a different editor here. So sometimes I have Visual Studio code installed, so I will choose this. However, I don't on this machine, so I'm just going to go ahead and use Vim. Go ahead and click next through this until you get to the end. Now that Git is successfully installed, you can go ahead and uncheck view release notes and hit finish. We can move on to the next step. This is where things start to get interesting. We are going to be downloading Stable Diffusion 1.4 from Hugging Face. Now, if you do not have a Hugging Face account, you will need to create one in order to get this file. There are two versions of the weights. You really only need the first version. If you are doing training, I recommend downloading the full EMEA version, as this will actually give you a little bit more consistency when training networks. However, for generating, the sdv1-4 ckpt file is just fine. Go ahead and click that, and it will begin downloading here. This file is four gigs, so how long it takes to get it will vary based off your internet connection. While this is installing, we can go ahead and find GFPGAN, which is another add-on we need to get for Stable Diffusion. Go ahead and follow the link in the guide, scroll down, and look for the version of GFPGAN you want to use. There are two really good versions. V1.3 is much better at producing very natural face restorations. V1.4 provides more character and details. I'm going to go ahead and download V1.4. And now while these are downloading, we can move on to the next step, which is installing Stable Diffusion Web UI. Go ahead and click this link to be guided to the GitHub for automatic 1111 Stable Diffusion Web UI. To get this package, you just need to come to the big green code button and click download zip. This will download pretty quickly and we can start to set up our Stable Diffusion web UI right away. Click on the up arrow, go to show in folder and extract this in a location that makes sense for you. I will be extracting this to my C drive. Go ahead and hit extract all, find a location 
In this case, for me, I will be just installing directly in here. Select the folder. I do not need to include the stable diffusion folder name here as it is also packaged inside the zip and then hit extract. Once it's done, a folder will pop up showing where this is located. Here it is. Now we need to add a few extra bits. So the first thing we need to add is our stable diffusion model. So you're going to go into the models folder and then into the stable diffusion folder. And in here, you're going to take that stable diffusion v1 checkpoint file and drag it in. I like to rename this file as I use stable diffusion for a few other plugins and they like it when the file is named model. So I'm going to go ahead and rename the file model here. You do not have to do that on your end. It's an optional step. Next, we're going to go back to the stable diffusion web UI master folder, and we're going to grab that gfpgan pth file and drag that directly into this master folder. Now that we have those set up, stable diffusion is pretty much running, and I'm going to show you how to launch it for the very first time. You're going to locate the web user bat file, double click it to run it. You do not want to run it as an administrator. Next, click on more info if you're seeing this Windows pop up and click run anyways. At this point, it's going to run through a series of steps to install the tools necessary to run Stable Diffusion. This includes Torch and Torch Vision. These two take a while to install. If the command line doesn't look like it's updating much at all, it doesn't mean that things are frozen. You can go ahead and get a better idea for how things are working by coming over to your task manager here and taking a look at your ethernet usage as well as your cdisk usage so we can see here even though there aren't many updates in this command line things are indeed moving along so we're just going to sit here and wait for this to install it can take anywhere from five to ten minutes it really depends on your internet connection All right, you'll know that you have successfully ran the web user bat when the local URL is pasted for you here. Go ahead and copy this URL, go to any web browser, open a new tab and paste it. Once you do that, the web UI will start running. Now it's really important that you leave this window open. You can minimize it, but don't close it as this is kind of what is running in the background. The web UI floats on top of it. So we can go ahead and test that everything is working with a simple text prompt. Go ahead and hit generate once you've written a text prompt. There you go, we've generated our first image. Now, one of the issues that exists in this version is that we are missing our history browser because now it exists as an extension. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to run it. To do that, you'll need to close your Stable Diffusion Web UI, and you will also need to close the running command line. Once you've done that, you are going to need to come to the document, scroll down to installing the extension, and copy this line here. Go ahead and copy that. And in order to get this to install correctly, you need to do so in the extensions folder. So you're going to find your Stable Diffusion Web UI master folder, double click it. Next, find your extensions browser, click it. In here, you're going to highlight this bar. And once everything's highlighted in blue, type in CMD, hit enter. This will launch a command window in this specific location. And once you see C slash stable diffusion web UI user master slash extensions, go ahead and paste git clone here. Once it's done, you'll be able to launch stable diffusion with the history browser. So you can go ahead and close this window 
Go back to Stable Diffusion Web UI Master, find the webuser.bat file, double click it, and run it one more time. Please keep in mind that this is much faster after the initial process, so you don't have to wait as long as the first time. Go ahead and select the URL pasted here. This URL, by the way, is always the same, so you could save it as a favorite in your bookmarks. Hit enter. And now you'll see that we have another tab here called Image Browser. And this will include the history of all the images we've made. So in this case, even though we're in a new session of uh, the Stable Diffusion Web UI, we can access all of our training data. And in the image browser, it gives us all of our general metadata info, including the text prompt we used, the steps used, sampler, and the seed, which is very useful if you want to try to recreate the same image again. So this is how you get the history image browser as an extension. And there are many other extensions you can add to this web UI. One thing I want to talk about before I sign off is about making these um, locations more accessible. I really like adding the web user bat as a shortcut to either my file menu here or my desktop. To do that, I just right click on it and I create a shortcut from it. Then I go ahead and drag the shortcut onto the desktop. And then I like to go ahead and go to the desktop again. I like to rename this as launch me first. Next, I'm going to right click and click new shortcut. And in this shortcut, I'm going to paste this web browser. And I forgot to rename it. So I'll rename it now to this way, it's easy for me to initiate processes. I can just click them directly from the desktop without having to go into my C drive and go file diving. So I hope that this installation process helps and that you guys are all able to get started and start having fun with Stable Diffusion.